The clock officially starts on that TikTok ban. It is jobs report Friday, what the number could say about our fragile economic recovery. Plus love hate eight at the end of a pretty brutal week. Here's what you need to know. Good morning, this is Shedder's Need to Know podcast for Friday, August 7th. I'm Jill Wagner with Carlo Versano. Uh, happy Friday, Carlo. We made it to the end of the week, Jill. I think we deserve a prize. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> um, before we start, some breaking news at this hour. There appears to have just been a, a pretty significant blackout affecting a large part of Manhattan. This includes the Upper West Side, uh, the Upper East Side, and Harlem. Um, did you see it on your ah. way in? <laughs> I, so yeah. I couldn't really. So I was looking because I drive, you know, I get the view of, of pretty much um, all of Manhattan. I, it was hard to tell. Um, I think that it was definitely darker in the, you know, up, yeah. up on the Upper East Side. But um, I couldn't. Well, it it like wasn't like that dramatic picture when we had that blackout a few years ago. During Sandy, yeah. Well, look, uh, the good news is there's no official word from Con Ed, but judging from uh, Twitter, it looks like the lights are back on or at least coming back on. My lights actually were flickering when I was taking a shower out here in Brooklyn. I don't know if that's something, another, a completely different apocalyptic thing that happened. But uh, anyway, I, it looks like we're back on track. So good news. Um, good. I mean, it, it's just, I, I guess like misery loves company, but I do not wish a blackout on Manhattan right now. Um, and yeah, I did get be- my power back at some point in the middle of the night last night. That's fantastic. Um, okay, let, let's uh, get to some news here. The State Department has lifted its global do not travel advisory. It's been in place for the past four months, saying that it would issue alerts going forward on a country by country basis. American travelers still face travel restrictions that keep them from traveling to most other countries, including the entire EU. The governor of Ohio, meanwhile, tested positive for COVID-19 just before he was set to meet President Trump. Then he tested negative several hours later, illustrating the convoluted testing landscape that is still in place across the country. It sounds like he took this rapid antigen test at first, which uh, they those have been known to give off some false positives. And then he took a PCR test later. Those are a bit more accurate. But, you know, the governor of Ohio can't even get accurate accurate test results. Uh, What chance do the rest of us have, Carlo? I mean, we got so many emails about this yesterday. Uh, so first of all, thank you to everybody who wrote in. We got dozens and dozens of these uh, um, of these people of uh, of people's just experiences with um, testing all across the country. Uh, and when taken together, it really paints kind of a, a a depressing picture and shows just that that this is a this is a mess. There's really no standardization. There's really no rhyme or reason to it. Depending on where you are, who you are, where you go, whether you do a, a get a public test or through an urgent care or through your job, uh, you know, some people had the perfect experience they, they went in they were in and out in five minutes they got their test back 24 hours later but most didn't most most of the stories we heard were people who you know were waiting for days they couldn't even get it they, they couldn't even get a test they went to the testing place and it was shut down you know this is a huge national failure um that this is still so ad hoc it is the first thing that should have been nationalized um and uh, I, there's not really much else to say about it, but the fact that the, the testing landscape is still so bad this far into this is really, I don't know, I don't know. I read a bunch of the, I read every email actually that came into us. Um, <clears throat> and it just seems like it's locate, it's, it's, all, it's solely location based. It, it almost feels like it's state by state. Um, in many cases too, like Colorado, um, one of our listeners said she couldn't even get a test because she didn't have symptoms. In San Francisco, um, somebody told us that they were able to get a test right away, results right away, um, and no issues. So, so to your point, I think it points to just the fact that um, we have we it's completely disjointed and, and we have no national testing plan. Before we move on, though, I, I do want to touch on this story out of Georgia. A high school girl took photos of the scene at her school um, North Paulding in Dallas, Georgia. The pictures went viral because they showed crowded hallways, very few students wearing masks. That girl was suspended for a week for posting those photos and the superintendent came out and defended the decision to suspend her, saying that masks were not required in the school because it is a quote personal choice and one that cannot be policed. Oh, this story gets me 
upset. I don't want to get riled up. It's Friday, but I mean, get to, riled to say up, that, Carlo. Uh, well, I mean, to say that you can't police mask wearing. I mean, tell that to every high school girl who has been embarrassed, right, for being told their skirt is too short or like the straps on their tank top are too thin. I mean, I remember back when I was in high school, you know, girlfriends of mine would be pulled out of class because they were wearing like spaghetti strap tank tops and told to cover up. Like what a, what a joke, what an embarrassment. This girl should sue the school, frankly, the superintendent of Pollen County School District, this guy, Brian Otot. You should be ashamed of yourself. Do your job. This is not your job to suspend this girl for showing what a mess that this already is. And we're in what, the first week of August? Um, you know, I, I was going to make a point about guns, you know, and, and what schools have been forced to do because of gun violence. And there is no outcry about rights, you know, when it comes to the students, right. when it comes to, you know, gun drills and God knows what else. Um, and it's a good segue here. New York's attorney general has filed a lawsuit against the NRA, alleging that the CEO, Wayne LaPierre, and other top officials have been draining the gun lobby of $64 million over years, using that money to fund their own lavish lifestyles. At a news conference, uh, the attorney general, Letitia James, saying she is seeking the dismantling of the entire NRA, uh, citing a pattern of alleged brazen Ill illegal illegality, sorry, um, for LaPierre and others to be banned from working um, at other nonprofits. The NRA immediately countersued and they call this uh, a political stunt. Yeah, so um, this is, I'm, I'm going to keep my personal feelings about the National Rifle Association to myself because I don't want to get in trouble. Um, but all I'll say is uh, politically, I think the timing is kind of short-sighted here on the part of Tish James, uh, who is a Democrat. She's sort of like a rising Democratic star here in New York. Um, and sure, part of this is political. I mean, there's no question about that. These things always are. Um, but I just think the timing is is ill considered on the part of the Democrats because this is going to motivate Trump supporters and it's going to motivate um, NRA supporters. Uh, and even if there is some sort of favorable favorable resolution for her in this suit, you know, it won't be for years. Uh, so I'm not really I'm not exactly sure why they decided to do this in an election year. To be honest. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I don't know. Um, Maybe they think it's a motivating thing for, for people on the left, but I, I, I don't know if that's the case. It could potentially, to your point, it could potentially backfire and be uh, motivating for people on the right. Switching gears, though, the tropics looking pretty quiet right now, but don't expect that to last. Uh, NOAA has revised its forecast for the Atlantic hurricane season now predicting 19 to 25 named storms to form this year, so we've already had nine. NOAA has never before forecast up to 25 storms. Um, I say this as a lot of power is still out in the Northeast um, after the tropical storm earlier this week. Uh, so that was not even horrible, right? I mean, when you think about... Um, that wasn't even a hurricane. It, yeah. was, it wasn't it, even it a hurricane. And uh, those storms gained strength. It was only August. Um, they actually say that uh, th that they might have to go to Greek letters, actually, if, if uh, you know, the <laughs> storms are named. So if they go right. all the way up to Z, we might uh, have to go oh, to Greek, Greek letters well, I, to start. I mean, nobody has the stomach for this. Uh, of course, you know what they say about Mother Nature. She doesn't care about your plans, right? Um, so I think uh, buckle up, folks. I don't know what else there is to say. Like, you know what, look, uh, again, what ha losing power for three days, it is what it is. I had to throw out a bunch of food. Uh, my daughter, I've, I've just, as I've discussed here, has food allergies, and it just complicates everything. Like, we have stocked up on certain brands of food mm -hmm. that we know that she can tolerate, um, and they're not always available. So, I mean, like, it does add a level of complication, but I'm not going to say that my situation was so horrific. Um, I did see, though, as we mentioned yesterday, just what dealing with something else on top of a pandemic feels like. And it is just a lot. And I mentioned yesterday, yeah. I forgot my mask for the first time. Um, I feel like my husband ran into the supermarket quickly to pick up because we needed more milk and we needed some things to, for my daughter. And like he didn't do some of the things that he sometimes does with the washing the yeah, hands. Yeah, yeah. It's just... Um, you know, Look, we your were brain go, can only your brain can only handle so much, right? Like, you know, my my parents uh, were going to go to 
stay with another family. And they were just like, they, they would never even think of doing that in normally in the pandemic, just because you're sharing the same air, you're yeah. inside, whatever. But they were just like, uh, we can't, we may do it. So you just let your guard down yeah, a little exactly. bit at, when you're dealing with a, a something else like power outages or, or whatever it may be. And, and I don't think that that bodes well for the rest of this hurricane season or wildfire season in California. Um, if people especially have to evacuate. Uh, I didn't even think about wildfires. Man, this is one thing after another. <laughs> All right, I wanna switch gears because um, we're, gonna about, we're about to go down a road of depression. Um, yeah. President Trump signed two executive orders that give uh, Chinese social media apps, TikTok and WeChat, 45 days before they are banned in this country over national security concerns. Uh, that effectively starts the clock for Microsoft to complete this acquisition of TikTok. Yes, yeah, so he's making good on uh, on his promise uh, uh, to do that. So, Jill, before we move on, um, sorry for the the, the quick uh, transition, but I do want to uh, pause and uh, shout out another podcast, uh, our friends over at Morning Brew. So, you know, our love of listening for listening to podcasts is why we make them. And I've been tuning into one lately that I think a lot of our listeners would really dig. Uh, it's called Business Casual. It's hosted by Kinsey Grant, like I said, over at Morning Brew. These are the folks that put out uh, this wildly popular and pretty hilarious uh, business newsletter that is a must read for a lot of the folks I know. Um, Jill, I know that you read it too. Uh, so Kinsey breaks down the biggest stories in business and interviews, you know, you favorite thought leaders, CEOs, high profile experts. She had Scott Galloway, uh, our, uh, our hero, Scott Galloway on the other we day. Love He's great. Scott Galloway. We love Scott. Um, but anyway, she, you know, she, she does these interviews in a way that sounds a lot like sort of like a couple of pals swapping stories at the bar, kind of like us. Um, but anyway, check out business casual, wherever you get your podcast from morning brew. Uh, it really is quite good. Oh, swapping stories at the bar. What were those days like? I, I miss <laughs> Remember? Them. Oh, uh, I man. do miss him. Okay, one thing I'm sure um, they will be covering and we are covering today is the jobs report. There's going to be a clearer picture of the delicate state of the economic recovery. The July jobs report comes out this morning at 8.30 a.m. Eastern. Economists expect about 1.6 million jobs to have been added in the month. So that is a far cry from the 4.8 million that were added in June. Other recent indicators suggest uh, it could even be generous because some analysts say uh, there actually may be a loss in jobs for the month. Hmm. Yeah, that's going to be bad if we see that. Um, but you know, the, the the these recent indicators like the ADP private uh, payroll data, the weekly jo the weekly jobless claims, they they have not been particularly good. Um, and if the number, if this number is bad, it's going to put even more pressure on on Congress to come to an agreement on this new rescue package, which can, you know, they're they're still at an impasse here. The $600. And they left, right? They left for vacation. No, I actually, I, I don't know. Actually, uh, usually they would be they would be leaving around now, but I think that they're still in town. But don't hold me to that. Um, you may be right. Let me check in on that and get back to you. Um, but you know, they do have to do something fast, uh, or we're headed we're headed for a consumer led recession. I think if they don't, you know, the the recession that. The, the pandemic recession like that happened because of this like external factor. But, you know, if you have a situation where nobody's spending money because they don't have any money, that's a whole nother ball of wax. Right. And that's something that is really hard uh, to recover from, which I, I, I think it's just more important than ever that they they have got to uh, they have got to extend these unemployment benefits and they have got to figure out a way um, to, to continue to help small businesses, especially small businesses like bars and theaters and restaurants, that there is no light at the end of t the tunnel for them right now. No. Um, you know, one, I know we a lot could get lost in the numbers because I think it's like sometimes you just hear a number and you don't even know what it means um, per se. Right. One number that I think is actually important. Yesterday we got the, the data on weekly unemployment claims. So that comes out yep. every Thursday. Um, and it was about 1.2 million Americans filed for first time unemployment claims. Okay. Uh, for, excuse me, for first time unemployment benefits. So the, what, the way I was thinking about this is that whether or not that number was up or down from the prior week, we're now on 20 straight weeks where more than a million people, where more than a million Americans have filed for first time unemployment benefits. So the fact yeah. that this pandemic started just say March, right? The fact that we're now six months or so, five months or so after the start of this pandemic, and we are still a million plus people 
have lost their jobs and filed for first time unemployment benefits is very troubling. Um, because when you think about it, you know, part of the reason that I think that lawmakers are having a tough time even passing anything is because when they passed the first massive civ stimulus, no one thought that at this point we'd still right. be in the thick of coronavirus and that we wouldn't have gotten a handle on it. And as hard as we try to separate the health crisis from the economic crisis, we cannot because to masks, yeah. no masks, whatever. If people don't feel comfortable and they they know that there's virus out there and they don't feel comfortable and safe, they're not going to go to restaurants or theater. You know, whatever the policy is about opening it or not. Um, so exactly. just the fact that we are again 20 straight weeks where more than a million Americans have filed for first-time unemployment benefits uh, tells me that this thing is far from over. No, and I, you hit on something really important that I think that gets overlooked, which is you know the whole point of everything that we did back in March and April was was under this expectation that it was going to be super painful but short right we were going to be locked down for a couple of weeks maybe a month we were going to you know we were going to get and give everybody time to get this thing under control to to get a national a national strategy in place to give the hospitals the breathing room that they needed to deal with that flood of of, of new patients and we did all that um, but we haven't gotten the virus under control and like you to, 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 like you just said you know if the virus isn't under control nothing else can happen Andy, I think it was Andy Slavitt, he tweeted something like, the good news is we're four weeks away from getting the coronavirus pandemic under control. The bad news is we've always been four weeks yeah, away right. from getting it under control. Um, no, that's a good, uh, yeah, that's true. Okay, uh, let's do a little love, hate, eight to end a very long, hot week. Carlo, I kick thought you never asked, Jill. Uh, okay, one thing we love, a good drugstore. You know what I'm talking about? If you walk in with one item in mind and then you walk out with like a bag full of lotions and ointments and snacks, that's how you know you were at a good drugstore. So I, I was thinking about this because I went to Rite Aid the other day to get something that my wife needed because I'm a great husband like that. And uh, I walked out with uh, a pint of haagen ice cream, some hand moisturizer that I didn't even need, uh, and a gigantic bag of Sour Patch Kids. That was a good drugstore experience for me. You know um, what I'm saying? I'm I'm processing the purchases. They seem weird <laughs> and random, but I get it. I don't think I've ever gone into CVS and not spent like 75 bucks. So. Yeah, exactly. It's almost as bad as Whole Foods where it's literally impossible to spend less than $100. Um, one thing that we hate, losing power in the middle of the summer, in the middle of a pandemic. <laughs> um, I could go on, of course, but if you wrote this year as a novel, I think your editor would probably tell you it is just too unrealistic pandemic yeah. not under control i mean it's well, just you, you can't make this up so, somebody one of the and i i apologize because i'm forgetting her name um but one of the people who wrote in yesterday she was talking about how you know she she was she got a test because she was going to visit her uh, her elderly parents and she was worried about them so but she didn't get her results back for a week so she spent a week camping out in a tent you know in the backyard <laughs> of her parents house and i was just like you know I, this is the you kind of thing write. like you can't you can't write it. You know, one day you'll look back and be like, I remember the summer of 2020 when I saw, you know, spent the summer in, in a tent in my backyard. So my, I didn't accidentally give my parents coronavirus. I think I'm, uh, I, I'm all these days are um, are blurring. But I think I I mentioned yesterday I texted that to my husband as I was um, as I was laying on my daughter's play mat in a basement because it was cooler yeah. than the 100 degrees. We're not going to a hotel because obviously that would be too risky and just saying one day we will look back at this and laugh. And or else you'll cry. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, everybody, That's let's funny. leave it there. It's been a long Wait, 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 wait. I didn't do a what? Didn't do oh, you didn't do eight. Thing. You didn't do eight. You didn't do eight. Go. Sorry. I'm sorry. Well, uh, it, it's not even a great one, but I do want to. The one thing that we ate or drank this week is uh, this stocks chocolate black cold brew and it sounds like i'm doing an ad right now but i'm really not my brother and i got addicted to this stuff when we were out east with my folks you know you add a little baileys in there if you want to live dangerously you know there's no rules anymore nothing says you can't put some baileys in your iced coffee uh, but it really is that good uh so stock stok is the name of the brand i don't know if you're listening i'm happy to take some free bottles uh although I, that may be an ethics violation now that i think about it so maybe maybe not but anyway it's good I'm a big cold brew fan here. Um, okay, that's good to know. I've never had it. <laughs>
<laughs> oh, Lord. Okay, Joe. Well, we did good this week. I'm glad All you're right. back and uh, have an hour. All right, me too. Uh, thanks for bearing with me, everybody, this week. That's what you need to know for Friday, August 7th. Safe this weekend, guys. <laughs>